Hey, welcome to a micro lesson on supply and demand. If you want to get paid well, stick around till the end for some career advice. Okay, let's start with demand. Here is the demand for pizza, just an example. Demand is always downward sloping. That means as P goes up, Q goes down. P being price, Q being quantity. Just for example, let's say we could sell two pizzas at $1. Well, now if it's $2 for pizza, we can sell one pizza, right? So it's always downward sloping, the demand curve. And we have to make this difference. This is demand, meaning all of it, like aggregate, the total. And then quantity demanded is this number that corresponds to a specific price. So quantity demanded and demand are two different things that's very important. And some things affect demand. Well, what things would affect demand? Um, maybe income, right? If, if the income of the population goes up, the demand for pizza goes up. People have more money, right? This is new demand, demand one. What else? So income, um, price of related goods, right? If tuna kebab, an alternative to pizza, becomes more expensive, maybe pizza will become more demanded, right? So demand would shift again. So when demand shifts to the right, this is an increase of demand. When demand shifts to the left, this is a decrease in demand. So this is an increase and this is a decrease. Well, what would decrease demand? Maybe if incomes went down or if tastes changed, all of a sudden there's a gluten-free trend and pizza's not cool anymore, right? So these types of things would decrease demand. So big points, demand versus quantity demanded. A shift to the right is an increase in demand. A shift to the left is a decrease in demand. And what affects demand? Well, income, taste and preferences, price of related goods, etc. And a quick point, these slopes are the same. I drew this pretty poorly, but the slope does not change when, it, when there is an increase or decrease in aggregate demand. Now we have supply, which is upward sloping. Why? Well, let's say we have one dollar for pizza and we sell two pizzas well if we can sell pizza for two dollar maybe we'll sell four pizzas right so quantity supplied would be four with two dollar uh, that's because right if the price goes up we can make more money we'll sell more so again quantity supplied is this value is a specific point on the curve related to a specific price that's quantity supplied but supply is the aggregate, the total, this graph. And what factors affect supply? Well, price of inputs. If it becomes really expensive to make pizza, tomato shortage, uh, maybe we'll stop making so much pizza and make more hamburgers. Or if a substitute becomes really expensive and I can sell that substitute, such as hamburgers, and make a lot of money, maybe I'll sell more hamburgers and sell less pizza, which would decrease supply. And again, so a shift to the right would be an increase in supply. That's one, right? Same slope again, increase. And then a shift to the left would be a decrease in supply, S2. Okay, Okay. so here is supply and demand together. We have the downward sloping demand and the upward sloping supply. And where they meet is the equilibrium, right? So where supply and demand meet is what will set the price and what will set the quantity quantity demanded, quantity supplied. And the idea is that in a perfect free market, they'll figure this out on their own perfectly and it will fit the needs of everybody. Of course, we know the real world is always more complicated, but that's the idea. Well, how to apply this to your life? Let's assume you want to get paid well. Okay, well, we have demand and supply for your work. Uh, if you do something that few people can do, right? Supply shifts to the left less supply and something that people really want demand shifts to the right oh well this was the original equilibrium of this price your salary now it's up here right so by doing something few people can do that society wants you get paid well and we see that dynamic all the time who gets paid consistently well in society it's doctors it's lawyers it's engineers it's really good salesmen right these people have skills that are in high demand and few people can do it well. So 
If you're really interested in money, maybe this is a helpful framework. Uh, I wouldn't do a career just for money. Personally, none of those careers fit my skill set, and I'm not doing any of them, but something to consider. If you want to get paid well, you want to be doing something that society demands and few people can supply.